What's up guys? Now I know that I'm taking more time to release videos than Rick and Morty to actually drop season 4, but hey. Now a few days ago, we had a Metallica gig here in London. And I was so excited about it that, you know, I went to the gig and I just couldn't stop posting this kind of video on my Instagram feed. You guys are really, really cool and I got a lot of nice and positive feedback. But immediately after, I started getting messages from people asking about how to improve their down picking. Well, I'm not exactly the fastest down picker in the West. I'm okay until 210 BPM, but from then onwards, I start crying like a little girl. So for today's video, I'm going to show you um, the things that enabled me to improve my right hand. That didn't come all right. Tip number one, use the Powerball. It warms up your muscles and makes the blood flow. I honestly think it helps you keep the center point of your pick. What I mean by that is once you start packing speed, you start tensing and you start to lose control of the pick. Uh, so you'll notice that with the Powerball, as you increase the speed, you move the hand less and less. Okay, so you keep more control on your picking and your picking goes back to the position where it originally was uh, more consistently. Now, word of advice for the Powerball is don't go nuts with the speed, especially if you're warming up, okay? Start with, the, with something that is comfortable for you, like one minute on each hand, for example, and just increase it gradually. Right, now, tip number two is about how to use the metronome properly. I mean, obviously you need to play to a metronome, but the tip here is to accent the first and maybe even the third beat. You know, sometimes just the first beat is enough. And there's an important reason for this, and that is it will help your brain find an anchor point. Uh, if you don't accent the beat, uh, once you get to a speed that is uncomfortable for you, you're gonna start getting all over the place. And most likely you'll start rushing and trying to catch up with yourself. So if you have a marker in time, a different sound uh, than just a regular click, that will kind of like help your brain reset and reposition itself in the tempo you're trying to play. So if you push the tempo a little bit, let's put, I don't know, 210 for example, 210 BPM, uh, with the very first click there, it makes it a lot easier. For tip three, you need to be super zen and relaxing your muscles. I mean, I'm pretty sure you've seen a lot of guitar players pulling faces and look like they're really straining, uh, like, you know, Steve Vai or the great Paul Gilbert, for example. But the truth is, and I can guarantee that their arms are super relaxed. So make sure you can move your shoulder, you know, as you're playing. I got this tip from my very first guitar teacher and it was passed on to him by a chiropractor. All right, now tip number four is about stamina. So more important than speed, you know, is the stamina. Because I mean, what's the point of like playing at 300 BPM for like 10 seconds when the song is like nine minutes long? So the best way to fight this is to actually play a song, all right? There's a really cool tool called Pacemaker. I don't know, do you guys remember Winamp? So what you can do is just download Winamp, I think it's still free and available, and then download Pacemaker, which is a plugin for Winamp. And what you can do is you can slow down the song, okay, and even change its tuning so that you don't have to like constant retune the guitar and all of that or have to edit it in a DAW. But you kind of like reduce the song to say 50% and then you increase the temp gradually. So this will take time, so you know, make a note on how fast you played it that day, and then the next day start, say, at 20% less that speed, um, and continue, okay? And make notes every time you go, so that you really know like where you left off and where you're restarting.
Now, for tip number five is once you really reach that threshold, so when the tempo is absolutely ridiculous, meaning it's way faster than you ever envisaged, play short bursts. If we have a, you know, if we have a tempo that is ridiculous, like for me at least, uh, I don't know, something like 240, for example, this. So down picking to this is, you know, it's, uh, like Stevie T says, it's carpal tunnel uh, syndrome. <laughs> uh, but um, if we have a tempo like that, what you do is you do small bursts. Now let's try something even more ridiculous. I was already struggling with 240, but like something like, like this, like 260. Yeah, let's try that. Yeah, it's ridiculous for me. It's really, really difficult. But even at this ridiculous speed, if you do these small short bursts, you can you can see that more and more the hand and the brain starts getting comfortable with uh, with the speed. So it's a matter of like doing this for a couple of days, weeks, or even months. You know, it de now this depends from person to person. To me, it took me quite a while uh, to get to a desired speed. As uh, I'm more comfortable with alternate picking now. I'm not a guitar teacher and I'm very far from being a guitar virtuoso, but these are the things that allow me to really improve and be able to play my favorite songs uh, at the fast tempos, which also reflected on my kind of my own writing, as I mentioned earlier. So I hope that this is somewhat useful and you can get riffing in no time to your favorite songs. So um, I'll see you soon in a very, 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 very long time. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. I'll do another video soon. So <laughs> don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.